Hello everyone and welcome to this new and exciting session in which we are going to visualize the convolutional neural networks feature maps. One very important part of building robust deep learning models involves understanding how these models work or understanding what goes on in the different hidden layers. And so in this section, we'll focus on taking a model which has already been pre-trained and then generating these feature maps so we get to see exactly what goes on under the hood don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this the pre-trained model we'll be using here will be the vgg16 so we'll simply copy this get back to our code paste this out um there we go we have our vgg16 we're not going to take the top so we'll take all this off now our input shape and uh, we'll take this uh, input tensor off we're not going to include the top so we set this to false that's it then this input shape will define it as our im size here so we have configuration im size that's fine and we add this here okay so that's it we set this and we uh, give it this name VGG backbone so we have VGG backbone right here we can check out a summary VGG backbone summary run that there we go you see it has about 14.7 million parameters we now move on to the next step where we're gonna create this other model which will permit us visualize this feature maps now to explain how this works let's recall that we have this vgg right here so we have our vgg and then what the vgg does is it takes in an input image so we have an input image and then it produces a single output now if we have say um not included the top then we would have this output which is eight by eight by 512 so here we have um, 8 by 8 by 512 and when it took in this 256 by 256 by 3 input now since we have only this one single output and we are interested in visualizing the hidden layers that what go that's what goes in the VGG model what we'll do now is we'll create a new model we'll create a new model right here which instead now has many different outputs and these different outputs will come from this different hidden layers so we could take this one and it becomes now an output this one it becomes an output this one output and so on and so forth so basically this hidden layers now or this hidden uh, or the outputs of the hidden layers that's our feature maps will become our outputs so we'll now have this model with this as input and then this as output so this will be now our different outputs instead of just a single output now we have this different outputs there will be about uh, 17 outputs in total now you may also decide to pick the specific output so you may want to take only the conf layers uh, the, or only the outputs of the conf layers so you omit the max pool layers uh year 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 and year with this one but it all depends on you and we'll see how to do this so let's get back to the code well we're not going to build our feature maps so we'll take the feature maps and then we'll put this in a list so here we'll get the layer output and this for layer in the vgg backbone layers so we, we we have this vgg backbone layers right here or this vgg backbone model here we're gonna get all its layers starting from this one we're not gonna pick the input so we'll simply have this and that will be it so we take this layers and then from here we'll build this new model which we'll call feature map model and Sakura's model from here it takes in as inputs the VGG backbone 
so we have VGG backbone input here we have the VGG backbone input is the same input but now with a difference that the outputs is this feature maps here so we don't have this just one output but all this other um, hidden layer outputs will now become our outputs or be part of our outputs so here we have feature maps so that's it we've built this new model we'll uh, view the summary feature map model that summary and there we go so that's it uh, it will look similar to what we have but if we had picked say from model 1 to just model 4 or sorry from layer 1 to layer 4 then you see it, it's shortened because this is all we need for this our new model but since we're getting right up to the end you see that we actually go through the whole VGG model but with the difference that now our, we have outputs that we have uh, s many outputs uh, and we have just this s one single input unlike before where we have one input and one output so from here we have this uh, model which we've just uh, this new model which we've just designed start from one run that again you have that and now let's head on to passing an input through this model so what we want to do now is we take this input image and then we pass it into our model and now since our model outputs the different feature maps the different hidden uh, layer outputs we will now be able to visualize what's going on inside our VGG model now to get this output we are going to use something similar to the testing which we've seen already recall we did we carry out this testing here where we take we read this image we could simply copy this where we read this image and then we pass it to our model to get the output but now in our case the model let's reduce this the model we'll be working with is our newly created feature map model so let's have this here and that's it we have our test image we resize we pass this in this feature map model and then you'll see that oh, we, when we run this we now check out feature maps so we we'll say for let's say for i in range length of the feature maps we want to print out want to print out the f map ship so we have that list has no attribute shape oh okay f maps i so let's pick out this i we run that and it's and you see this so you see that the output starts from here from this uh one instead of the input starts from it actually starts from here as we since we had decided to start from this one since we decided to start from here because we don't want to include the input as part of our output so that's logical we have that we start from this right up to this very last one year now here we've picked the conf layers and the max pool layers so we have all this now so we can now um, visualize this different feature maps right here now let's note this length let's print this out let's note this length you see you have 18 different outputs we get back here and we we'll modify this so we'll say that we'll only do this if is conf of layer that name is true so if this is true if this is true then we are going to attach this to the outputs now uh, we could also do this we could just simply have it like this and that's fine now so what this means is we are only going to take the conf layers as part of our output now we could define this is conf this if is conf takes in a, a layer name so basically this layer names are what we have here that's you see why it's important to always give your layers some names because now you see it's helpful always it's used now to differentiate between the different um, types of uh, layers so here we have this layer name and then we're gonna uh, say that if this layer name if this layer name or rather if conf in the layer name we return true then else we return false so we run that 
there we go we run this again it looks similar to what we had before but one thing you notice now is that this length is reduced so we've taken off five we've gone from 18 to 13 so we've taken off five layers which correspond to this max pool layers since this conf uh this conf isn't in this name right here so that's it we have that we could also decide to say okay we want to take only the max pools so we will say if pool or uh, pool we run that and we check this line you see now only five there we go so that's it uh let's get back to conf and we have that okay so now we've run this and we have the different ships now to carry out the final visualization you see you have this f maps here so we're gonna go through each and every feature map so for i in range the length of our feature maps we now create this figure and then we specify the fixed size so we have fixed size equal 256 by 256 now we have that we call this method right here and then from here since we're going through each and every feature map it's important for us to get the feature size so we want to get this values for each feature map now with this we just simply have f maps we have k and then or rather i here so we get in this we pick a, a feature map we get that and then we get the shape uh one so this will permit us to get this value since so this is shape zero shape one shape two shape three so we get this feature size the uh, feature map size then we now get to this number of channels so we have n channels equal the feature maps i shape three three because this is zero one two three so this is how we get the number of channels now we have this already set we want to be able to visualize this such that like here such that all these channels are aligned on a single line so because we have this 512 16 by 16 let's let's check this earlier ones we have like here we have 64 256 by 256 images so let's suppose that this is one of them here we have this 256 256 by 256 right here and then we have 64 of this for the 64 different channels right here now what we want to do is take this one let's take this one put it here take this other one and align it take the next one align it so we could visualize this in one line up to the very last one right here so to do this now what we'll do is we'll create another array which we'll call joint maps joint maps uh mp1s we initialize that way and then the size yes we'll take the feature size so we have f size and then to get the with th this for the width this for the height actually so we, we we know that the height in the case of 256 by 256 this height is 256 so we have this height 256 this distance 256 but then now the width is going to change so the width is no longer 256 but 256 times in this case 64 so here we have um 256 here we have f size times the number of channels so that's how we do that so with that we now have this joint maps which is initialized to one so we have this uh array now set now the next step will be to fill in these values this outputs these features in this r array now we understand how this joint maps here was created we now go ahead to fill this um, information or this different uh, features in this giant maps array so here we'll do we'll go through the different channels so for j in uh, range uh, n channels so basically n channels we have that and then we fill in the joint maps now the way we'll do this is we'll keep the height fixed 
so we have the height fixed and then in this width dimension we'll fill this information in a way that as we go from one channel to another we are going to skip steps of 256 so here we will have um f size our filter size our feature uh map size is 256 f size times j and then we go to f size times j plus one so what this means is we'll we fix the height as we've said already we've we'll fix this height here the height is fixed 256 that's it here so we'll take all um, elements in the height and then for the width when j equals 0 for example we have 0 up to 0 plus 1 so the year we have 0 0 plus 1 so we have 0 and then 0 times f size is 0 then 1 times f size is 256 so this means that in the width dimension we're gonna go in the height we have 256 in the width we have 256 now when j goes to 1 now here we have 1 1 times f size is 256 so we have 256 and then 1 plus 1 is 2 2 times 256 is 512 so now we'll skip 256 steps at this point we are at this point now and we get this one and then we repeat the same process again when when j equals 2 we have 512 and then we move to this should be 768 um no 256 yeah 768 so now we go from 512 to 768 and so that's how we're going to be filling up these different positions right here now once we have this uh, already set we now go ahead and pass in the data what we have to fill in here so we have f maps and then we take in i if we consider this case where j equals zero that's we've picked this zone from zero to 256 and we've collected all the height then we have this patch right here and to fill up this patch we have uh, our feature maps uh, which we've seen already but then we're gonna take a particular feature map obviously this i here picks that particular feature map and then once we pick the particular feature map we can now go ahead and set this here to the values of the feature maps while selecting the particular channel so now we when j equals zero for example we take the zero channel and so we'll take all the values which come before and then pick out now this zero channel for example now here's j so that's it we have we have our join maps which has now been created and then we could take this off and we're now ready to plot our image so we have this im show and then we pass and join maps now if we want to pass all this it's going to be very um ram consuming so we just take the we we'll, we'll select all the height and then we'll pick some values so we'll go from zero to for example 512 so we'll have that and now we could run this but before running this we need to set the different axis here we have axis then we have plot that subplot uh the length of the feature maps so here we'll basically if we have 13 feature maps then we're gonna have this um different subplots here one and then here we have i plus one so that's it so once we have this set we can now run this and see what we get takes a while to run and now that's complete we could visualize the results here let's simply scroll down and you see this result you see for the initial layers we have this low level features which have been extracted so we have we could see this clearly here and as we go down or as we go further or deeper into the network this uh the features we extract in start to become more high level features so you see this see here see this one um focuses see here we extract this mouth here unlike before where we're more focused on um edges so that's it we keep going deeper and we see the outputs or the results we get in and that's it we've just visualized a train models feature maps 
now another thing we could do is suppose at this beginning year that we have known right here so we don't we we, we don't want the pre-trained weights so we we'll run this run this again and check out on what we are gonna or what the model is gonna produce here's what we get you let's scroll so you get to see this you see the inputs um and as we go deeper we'll notice that not much information is yet to be extracted from the inputs